Porsche is one of the car manufacturers who seem to perfect the driving experience. Where their cars out of the box are already as good as it gets. The styling, the power, the sound. Why would anyone want to modify a Porsche? Or rather, how could someone make it even better? Well, one company has done it. Today we are talking about Singer Vehicle Design, its origin story, and what they have done to a Porsche 911 to create an ultimate driving machine. Hi friends, I'm Sepp. Welcome back to a new video. If you're new to the channel, I'm just a car enthusiast making videos for other car enthusiasts, and I try to post a new video every week. So feel free to subscribe to my channel so you get your weekly dose of YouTube car content. Singer Vehicle Design started out as an amazing Arresto mod. Rob Dickinson, the founder of Singer, was actually a real singer, as the lead vocalist of a band called Catherine Wheel. He also is the paternal cousin of Iron Maiden frontman Bruce Dickinson, so there must have been some creative talents in his genetics. The name Singer also pays homage to Norbert Singer, a Porsche engineer who helped Porsche win 16 victories for the 24 Hours of Le Mans race between 1970 and 1998. Norbert was also involved in the development of the 911 Carrera RSR and RSR Turbo 2.1. Anyways, Rob was a Porsche enthusiast and in 2002 decided to restore his 1969 Bahama Yellow Porsche 911. He redid the bodywork, threw in a 3 liter flat 6 motor and installed a Recaro seat. Rob lived in the Hollywood Hills and daily drove his beloved Porsche around. And since Hollywood is full of celebrities and wealthy individuals, his unique looking Porsche started to get attention from them. People would actually stop to offer to buy his car. So much so, he eventually decided that the demand was good enough for a business case to rest a mod Porsche 964s for these individuals with deep pockets. The 964 is a 911 chassis produced from 1989 to 1994. By 2009, the company took off as Singer Vehicle Design and has been going strong ever since. So why a Singer Restomod may be the ultimate driving Porsche? Rob didn't want to just make the aesthetics look good, he wanted to perfect the car, inside and out. The company's mantra is everything is important, and that is not meant to be taken lightly. To clarify, Singer does not produce or manufacture cars, they restore cars. They don't mean to exploit the Porsche legacy, but instead open up unlimited possibilities of what a Porsche can be. The possibilities are client driven from the choice of suspension, transmission, leather, trim material, wheels, paint, audio, engine, and much, much more. So every singer is unique and is catered to specifically how a customer wants it to look and drive. However, today let's go through Singer's most craziest rendition of the Porsche 964, their dynamic and lightweighting study version, or DLS in short. The goal for this car was to take the hardcore Porsche enthusiast's dream and turn it into a reality. To make a car so high performing, only Formula 1 level of expertise could match up. And actually, that's exactly what Singer did. They enlisted Williams Advanced Engineering, the road car division of the Formula 1 team, to design and build the car. Singer had some crazy deliverables for the DLS. Firstly, the car had to be light, like 2,000 pounds light. Secondly, it had to have around 500 horsepower while retaining the air-cooled system. And in addition, it needed to remain naturally aspirated. Williams had their work cut out for them, but their F1 experience transferred perfectly to what Singer needed. They started off with the original 3.6 liter flat 6 and bored it to 4 liters for more displacement. The internals were then beefed up with forged pistons and titanium connecting rods. So far, so good, but an air-cooled engine has difficulty managing heat, especially when the original power output was nearly half of what Singer aimed for. To dissipate the heat, Williams upgraded the cooling fan to a fully magnesium one and added twin head-mounted oil lubrication pumps to aid the original. For sharper engine response, individual throttle bodies were implemented, which also created a throatier exhaust note. Then the valve system had a complete overhaul, with a 4-valve aluminum head and F1-derived sodium-filled titanium valves to transfer heat away from the valve seat. Other engine upgrades include twin injectors, RAM intakes fed by inlets integrated in the rear side windows, and a titanium exhaust system. For the suspension, the rear utilizes reshaped rear trailing arms, whereas the front comes with a double wishbone multi-link suspension. 
The dampers are from EXETC, the same company that developed suspension systems for nine WRC title winning cars. To utilize form and function, a full CFD simulation was conducted, which helped Williams maximize the downforce by modifying the position of the rear spoiler. To deal with high torsional stresses during turns, the chassis was stiffened thanks to a 40mm FIA rated roll cage and structural carbon fiber body panels. In order to have the tremendous stopping power required, Williams fitted Brembo carbon ceramic brakes. Fitted over these are center locking forged magnesium wheels by BBS, wrapped with sticky Michelin Cup 2 tires. To ensure no power is robbed during acceleration, a large lithium ion battery is fitted in the front to run the AC and hydraulic power steering. And the alternator only charges when there is minimal load on the engine. Williams and Singer went to great lengths to guarantee all the mechanical components of the DLS had been scoured over to squeeze out as much performance as possible. Now for the aesthetic portions of the car. The exterior has been revamped with in-house made taillights with nickel plating. The rear spoiler is the ducktail style from the 1973 Carrera RS with a little Singer insignia centered at its base. There are several other touches to the exterior, but overall just modernizes the car without taking away the classic look of the 964. The interior is a perfect balance of analog and opulence. The steering wheel is a Momo three-spoke design composed of carbon fiber and nicely wrapped in leather. Looking beyond the wheel, we find analog gauges with jewel-like finishes. And get this, some gauges could be optioned out with gold details produced by the same company that supplies Bugatti's gauge cluster. Sitting down, we get synced into the deep carbon fiber Recaro bucket seats upholstered with any design theme requested. Down to the shifter column, we get the golf ball shaped shifter, sitting on an old school accordion style shift boot. Almost all of the trim is made out of carbon fiber that's neatly packaged up with leather to retain an upscale look with the least amount of weight. The result of all of this is a meticulously detailed engineering marvel, revving out to 500 horsepower to an eye-watering 9300 RPM redline. Considering this car only weighs around 2,180 pounds, the power to weight ratio is staggering. All the lucky journalists who were able to drive this car absolutely gushed over it because Singer arguably created one of the best driving machines ever. And they did it without tarnishing the original 911 spirit. They focused on the driving experience. And for us car enthusiasts, that is what is most important. All of this does not come cheap. At a price tag of 1.8 million US, this car is well within hypercar territory in terms of cost. So what do you guys think about the Singer Porsche 911 DLS? Do you think it's the ultimate Porsche 911 ever created? Or should I say recreated? Let me know down in the comments. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. I will catch you all on the next one. Take care.